I got to the breaking point and went to see a doctor when we were trying to enjoy a musical and I was getting up and walking out. This is it. I'm not going to let this rule my life anymore. What you're listening to may sound all too familiar. If it is, you're probably one of 7 million Americans suffering from restless leg syndrome or RLS. Yet with so many affected out there, why are so many doctors still not acknowledging RLS as a true medical condition? Well, here to answer that question is RLS and sleep disorder specialist, Dr. Richard Bogan, and here to share her personal journey to overcome RLS is Shirley Ness. It is so good. This is such an important topic. Thank you for coming in the studio today. Thank you. Shirley, I want to start with you, and where did it all start for you, and how long ago did you start with, with your symptoms? I was in my late teens. I was in college. I couldn't sit through the long lectures. I had to keep moving my legs around, and I was so glad to get up and move around when they were over. And teachers probably thought, oh, she's hyperactive, she's squirming, she can't sit still. And how did it affect then your life, your job, your family? Because I couldn't sleep at night, I was rolling around, I was kicking around, I had to get up and walk half the night. I was exhausted, so I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do. Like, for instance, I played the organ since I was in high school, and I had to stop because really? I couldn't sit still. And how did your doctor respond when you told him your symptoms? I said the symptoms to him, and he looked at me and said, you have... RLS, you have restless leg syndrome. Thank goodness he was able to yes. diagnose you, but how yes. old were you when that happened? Oh, it was about 15 years later because as you get older, it gets worse. So I got to the point where I was desperate and I went to him. Great, and Dr. Bogan, I know this is a real disease affecting millions of people, but isn't it true that many doctors out there are still not acknowledging it? It's, it's interesting, um, RLS is, is really prevalent mm -hmm. and it's medically important. Um, I'm intrigued. 30 years ago we thought this was a rare disorder but now with scientific study and research we know that 10 percent of the population, the adult population, has some symptoms at some time and 3 percent of the adult population it's moderate to severe and interferes with sleep and causes significant impairment of function. But it affects children too. It can. Um, we know ch children with growing pains. Yeah. Um, could likely have restless leg syndrome and oftentimes are mistaken for ADHD. What are the important signs you, doctor, look for when you're diagnosing this? Well, the patients tell us that they have this unbelievable urge to move. Mm -hmm. So it's worse in the evening hours with rest. And if they do move around, they get temporary relief from the symptoms. So it greatly impacts sleep. I mean, when you're resting at night trying to get to sleep yes. is the worst time. Worst so sleep time. is disturbed. And they have spontaneous leg movements, and they have leg movements during sleep. So it disturbs sleep and affects next day function. They're tired. They're sleepy. And any positive updates on, like, treatment options? Well, fortunately, we have lots of good treatment options now. So the, the main thing is to recognize the disorder. Uh, if you don't recognize the disorder, you will not make the diagnosis. And these folks are significantly impaired, and now we have good treatment options available. Thank you so much, Doctor. And when we come back, we'll also hear Shirley's advice on living well with RLS. So stay right there. Welcome back to The Balancing Act. We are rejoined by sleep disorder specialist, Dr. Richard Bogan, and by restless leg syndrome patient advocate, Shirley Ness. We learned some interesting things, but now let's get specific. Doctor, what are the symptoms and symptom patterns for RLS? Right, um, these, these individuals have the uncontrollable urge to move their legs. Mm. So we have these four definitions, uncontrollable urge to move the legs, oftentimes associated with pain or funny feelings, creepy right. crawly feelings. It, it is worse in the evening hours. Okay. It comes on with rest. Okay. And the, the urge to move is so bad that they get up and move around. If they move around and get temporary relief or relief from the symptoms, then that's restless leg syndrome. Wow. And because um, the symptoms are mild and they get worse with age, does, the, does that often cause a, like a delay in diagnosis? Absolutely. Um, Many of the patients actually present to their physician with insomnia or can't sleep or ah, tired. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah. So they're seeing their doc about hypertension or diabetes or whatever problem they have. Yes. And then as they're leaving, oh, by the way, I can't sleep. And if you don't ask the question, 
do your legs bother you? Is it in your mind or is it in your legs? Right. You will not make the diagnosis. You have to ask those four questions. Four questions, very important. Shirley, how long did it take for you to reach that diagnosis with your doctor? It took about 15 years. Right. They started out mild. Right. But as I got older, it got worse. And I got to that point where I could not sleep. I could not do things with my family. It completely ruined my life. So I went to the doctor. And during those 15 years that you were undiagnosed, did you ever tell anyone your symptoms that specifically? Or was it just that it wasn't an awareness that wasn't no, there? I, I had never heard of restless leg See? syndrome. Mm -hmm. it, it was something new to me. And, and it must have been an encouragement because this disease has such a profound effect on a person's quality of life. Yes. And for you, it must yes. have been a huge change to be diagnosed. Oh, it was. I was able to go back doing things with my family that, that I couldn't do before. I could go to movies. I could sit through sporting events. All these things I had given up. Oh my gosh, what a relief. Yes. And doctor, someone out there experiencing these symptoms, you know, burning in the legs, uh, I guess it feels creepy and crawly and it's hard to sleep. How do you start that conversation with your doctor? Well, I think it's important for the, for the patients to know that there's treatment available. And so you have to talk to your physician. You have to describe the symptoms and make sure that you describe this uncontrollable urge to move. And, and again, what, those doctor, four things. what are the treatment options available? Well, we have several treatments. Um, we have dopamine agonists and alpha-2 delta ligands and opioids. So there are treatments available for this disorder, but you've got to ask your physician about what's going on. Absolutely. And Shirley, how are you feeling today? Oh, 100% better. Really? All these things that I couldn't do, I'm doing now. I'm making up for lost time. And you're sleeping? I'm sleeping. And what advice would you give to our viewers or our audience members out there that might be feeling some of these you know, symptoms coming on? Well, definitely go to a doctor who knows restless leg syndrome. Describe your symptoms. There is help out there. You shouldn't have to suffer. Wonderful advice, such an important topic. Thank you so much for both joining me today. It was a pleasure to have you in the studio. Well, thank you for having me. It's very important to diagnose. Yes, it is. If any of the RLS symptoms we mentioned sound familiar to you or you need some support and resources, head to rls.org, restlesslegs.com, or norestforrls.com. And of course, you can also log on to thebalancingact.com as well. 